It is so much going on, but I ain't got nothing to do with it. It's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. It's a whole lot, a lot of going on. It's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. It's a whole lot, a lot of going on. It's, a whole lot, a lot of going on. it's Monday, and you know what that means. If it ain't about me, then I'm a kiki. First on the dock, and then I'ma talk shit. Got my sugar, honey, iced tea. Do you wanna sip now? Period. I said what I said. Now move along, bitch, before you get red. P.O.P. You can't stick with me. Come on, girls, let's get. A lot of going on. There's a whole lot, a lot of going on. There's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. There's a whole lot, a lot of going on. Hey creeps, and welcome back to Messy Monday. As you already know, you can't sit with me unless you are P.O.P. and that is pretty on purpose. How you doing? Um, I just got one question. Did y'all make it through the eclipse? Because all supposed to like die or something. When it's something like the CERN or the Siren and it's supposed to shoot up in the air and all this crazy shit supposed to go. Girl, y'all be really just doing too much. I just be like, girl, what these conspiracy people be thinking when the shit don't go through? But anyway, y'all made it. Shout out to y'all. Uh, we made it through another week. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's really tough out here in these streets. I mean, from these kids fighting Folk lying on you. Just, I mean, so much. You turn around, something going on. So, child, shout out to you. Um, I ain't gonna hold y'all too long because, bitch, we need to get into this mess. The girls was girling. And I mean, a whole lot, a whole lot. Let me go on and shout out my friend, and that is Max. Hey, bitch. Max, thank you so much for having my post notifications on. That means so much to me, girl. You were the first to comment on my Twitter page, and I greatly appreciate that. So now I am taking the time out to shout you out. So everybody go on over there. Give her a little love, retweet, say, girl, what's going on, what's tea, whatever the case may be, and uh, do that, because we got this on Navy, and it's on Navy 6 together. So thank y'all so much, and thank you for riding with me, Max. Hey, bitch. All right, we're going against y'all favorite part, and that is the shit, the sugar, honey, iced tea, because you girls love staying in some shit. First for the sugar, honey, iced tea, we have Broadway. <laughs> Now, before we start with Rodway, I know y'all love him, so please do not come for me. But what I am, what I am gonna come for is that 56350. That is, that is a mean combo. <laughs> That's some nasty work. Now they know they could have scratched that out because that was disrespectful. That is the definition of a meatball. Mm -mm. Y'all ain't finna get me. Wait a minute. Now, we all gagged because we like, wait a minute, he's not a felon. How is this even possible? Now, you know, he done been in some scuffles and some things like that. But being arrested does not make you a felon. Now, if we gonna be real about the situation, I'm sitting here like, cop, what he gonna do? Throw the bullet? This man's thinking about heartbreak to love. Come on now. <laughs> Ain't nobody scared of Rod. And then I'm like, have y'all not heard his lyrics? He said, green light, pistol in the party don't seem right. So why he gonna have a pistol? Come on, y'all gotta do better than that. I know he's sitting in there like, heart been broke so many times, I don't know who to believe. It's okay, Rod. We gonna, we gonna find a better way. <laughs> I, 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 this is not the time to joke. So then Rodway's attorneys came out, they made a statement, and they had said that the arrests that they made were incorrect. Rodwave is not a convicted felon, has never been a convicted felon. They hoped that additional research would have been done prior to his arrest, but I guess they didn't do it, and then they will be holding these people accountable. But child, I don't know, let me go on and shut up, cause <laughs> I've never been to prison. 19 felons, no convictions, hello somebody. But, <laughs> the word on the curb is saying, but then he choked his baby mama up and she was pregnant, so maybe they were thinking that. I don't know, they might be some fans, but whatever the case may be, Free that man and let him out. Open up that cell, let that man out of jail. Open up that cell, let that man out of jail. All right, well, if it ain't about me, let's keep keeping this case. Next for the Sugar Honey Ice Tea, we have Chance the Rapper and Kristen. So from the looks of it, it seems like Trouble in Paradise has taken its toll. Now I don't know if y'all remember, he went to that carnival and he was dancing on the women and it had just caused this big uproar. She made a statement, he came out with a statement, the internet was going crazy. And that's when that little Kiki Palmer thing came about. Woo woo woo, yada yada yada. Well child, I guess they've been trying to see if they can get past that and move it, whatever the case may be. And honey, they finally came out with a statement. 
And they basically said they came to an agreement that they have both understood that it's just time to part ways, but they will both take care of the daughters together. But at this time, they asked for privacy. And I'm like, well, girl, if y'all want the privacy, Mr. Thing, y'all should have brought to the internet because we want to know what the fuck going on. Why did y'all come up with this decision? But then the word on the curb was this decision happened just a few days before the carnival in Jamaica again. I said, well, girl, maybe she got PTSD and she was like, you know what, fuck this shit, I can't do this again. So they just ain't together, girl. That's so sad, it was such a good couple, so beautiful. I thought this really kind of hurt. Sus just couldn't get past it. She couldn't let it go. Cause now after seeing all this, I'm just like, do we stand a chance <laughs> with marriage? Or should she have given him another chance? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm so corny. But one thing I will say, she is a Gemini, and we do not tolerate disrespect. So I get it. All right, well, I guess everybody ready for summertime. If it ain't about me, <laughs> let's get key next. Okay. Next for the Sugar Honey Ice Tea, we have Lisa. Now, for those who don't know, that is Justin Combs' mama. Now, she took to the internet and she said that she felt the raid on Diddy's home was excessive force used on young black men to terrorize them. Now, child, this ain't me, but the word on the curb is they were saying, well, girl, what the hell you thought they was going to do? Send them a text message and say, hey, we're coming, and then meet at the front door with some donuts. Like, girl, no. That's what they said. But I'm over here thinking like, yes, it was excessive. This wasn't like it was El Chapo in the house. You didn't have these people who had folks hidden in the basement, whatever the case may be. But that was the allegations. I feel this was somebody extorting them and they just wanted them to come in there and this is some undercover work that's going on and something that we don't know behind the scenes is happening. I don't know. I really don't think all this Diddy stuff is what people are saying it is. Now, I do believe some of the stories might be true at the parties or whatever, but I believe it might have been consensual. But I ain't going to talk too much because I don't want to saying I'm picking side, picking side. But I just don't always want to tear down our black men when we really don't have stuff set in stone. And then it don't make it no better when this come up. I'm just like, damn, well, does the apple not fall far from the tree? Because now he's getting accused of sexual assault on a yacht. But his lawyers are coming out saying that's not true. This didn't happen. And we just like, well, girl, what did and what didn't happen? Did it do it or did it not? And then can we rewind back and look at what this says right here about the lawyer who's doing all this stuff against, you know, Diddy and Justin and all them? This man is known for filing false information. And it has been a pattern for him. And pause the video and read this. And he does this to gander media's attention so that the defendants can settle quickly. Look at all what they said about Mr. Blackburn. And this just makes me think now, is all the stuff that's being said about the Diddy and all that Rodney stuff true? Because no one wants to take the time to actually wait for the judges and lawyers to do what they do to prove people innocent or guilty because they say this man has been accused of doing this shit over and over and over again. Now, all these 35 years of stuff going on with Diddy and the stories, okay, but these two boys, innocent. Blackburn, throw his ass out. How is he still a lawyer? But... I don't know, honey. We're going to have to keep an eye on this. Diddy then comes out because he's been on a little hiatus and on his page, he posts this right here. Yeah. So when you hear something, make sure you hear it right. Don't make it yeah. out of yourself by assuming. Now, I don't know what that means. Maybe he got some good news. Maybe he just said, hey, stay positive. Now, a couple of other people did this at the beginning of their stuff. Child, it didn't end up good for them either. So we're going to just wait and see. But anyway, that about me. Let's keep keeping this game. Next for the Sugar Honey Ice Tea, we have Lizzo. Now, what the hell y'all done did to Lizzo? <laughs> y'all leave this woman alone. This woman that came up and she, and she said she is tired. She is tired. She said all she want to do is make music and make people happy. But every time she do that, she come up being the butt of the joke. People talking about her, filing reports on her. Just belittling this woman. What, is, what the hell? Everybody loved Lizzo when she came out dancing and singing with a flute and that was just like, fuck Lizzo. Because these folks done said this one little thing. Y'all know y'all love to turn on y'all people. So then Lizzo goes on and she said she felt like the world don't want her in it. And she said, baby, she quit. And I'm just like, oh, Lizzo, don't do it like that. But don't stop making the music over these folks. You made some good music and you are an amazing artist. So, you know, in that moment, I feel Lizzo was really upset. I feel she really did want to quit. I think she was just going through emotions. She was tired of so much. Then she turned around and she said this. I 
want to make this video because I just need to clarify. When I say I quit, I mean I quit giving any negative energy attention. What I'm not going to quit is the joy of my life, which is making music, which is connecting to people. Because I know I'm not alone. In no way, shape, or form am I the only person who is experiencing that negative voice that seems to be louder than the positive. If I can just give one person the inspiration or motivation to stand up for themselves and say they quit letting negative people win, negative comments win, then I've done even more than I could have hoped for. With that being said, I'm going to keep moving forward. And after watching that video and me being in social media, it's just sad how like when you're in the eyes of millions of people and thousands of people, whatever the case may be, you can't just vocally express yourself and just let it freely flow because you have so many different people taking your video however they choose to take it. You may have some people taking it in a positive way, a negative way, a confused way, and they're all having their own opinions on it. So it's like watching that video, I so chopped up and she wants to make sure she says this right and she can't even just express herself. Because we've all expressed being tired, being fed up with energy and then when you gotta come and read all the comments like, oh girl, shut up, you just realized your contract say you can't quit right now. Oh girl, whatever girl. You shouldn't, now you paying attention to the negative comments but you said you weren't paying attention to the neg negative comments. Oh girl, like, Damn! I don't know, I hope she finds her peace because I miss when, you know, celebrities was just on TV and we weren't all in their life like that because I know it's so hard for them now because child, this new generation is something else. All right, well if it ain't about me, let's keep getting this cake. Next for the sugar on the ice tea, we have Kishiko and Hancho. Now baby, I did not see this happening, but I do know Keisha like them young though, because what, Keisha like 40? 40, what, 43? And he like, what, 25? But y'all sure did give Drea a whole lot, a whole lot of when she was dating this guy. But then I heard people were saying, oh, well, it's because her son the same age as him and she having a baby by him. Keisha just dating him. Well, Keisha, baby daddy, was your... The selective outrage is crazy, but I mean, hey, do what y'all do, I ain't got nothing to do with it. If they want to be cougars, let them do it. Because what it seems like is these guys just be want to date their older crushes the women okay with it. Knowing the niggas gonna dog them out. So hey, let them do it. They were seen going into the club, honey. And uh, people was just gagging because now they're speculating that these two are a couple. But I'm just gagging because, oh girl. I thought Huncho was with Gloss or something like that. And then this is crazy. He like, what, 6'8"? And she not even 5'5"? Five, five? <laughs> but my question to y'all is, how long are y'all giving this? A 30 day trial or seven to 14 business days? What's tea? What's going on? Y'all put in the comments, they gonna last long, it's gonna be two months, this just a hunch of much. What is it? What's going on? Cause I just don't see, I don't know, I just didn't see this. And then hunch y'all, ooh, he's funny. Huncho is just always giving me very much, I don't really wanna be here, whenever he's out anyway. I, he don't give me settle down tea right now. He just give me like slinging good dick and that's it. But anyway, all right. If it ain't all about me, let's get you next, okay? Next for the Sugar Honey Ice Tea, we have Lonnie and her mother Stacy. Now for those who don't know, this is Polo G's sister and Polo G's mom. Now, Leilani had went on live, and when she went on live, she let everybody know that she had fought her mother on Easter. It took me a lot of, a, a lot of points to get here. I wore my mom and on Easter. Now let me stop it right here, because when I'm looking at this video, I'm just like, something is off. Like, the crying with no tears is crazy to me. Like, something ain't adding up, so then I kept watching. I wore my mom and on Easter. <laughs> Beat the dog. And right there, I'm like, oh, this girl crazy. I am going off her mannerisms. So then I finished the video. Bro, she a fake Wanna be fake birth, I birth legends that It's you, not none of that. Let's talk about it. No, I don't get no Miana. I don't get no I don't care no more. I tore that up. Yes, I did. And I beat the baby mama 
Ooh, stop playing with me. I sat in court cases for my brother. I sat in literal, literal court cases for my brother. The house got raided. The bitch wasn't there. And I'm like, oh my God. Your mama shot at you 16 times and tried to stab you? What is going on with this family? So I don't know if y'all read everything. I looked at everything because everybody is like saying the mama wrong. This ain't no type of mama, whatever the case may be. They both need help. They both need help because when I look at this, the daughter, Leilani, it seems as though, if I'm reading everything correctly, she had a drinking problem as well, anger issues as well. And the mother was keeping that a secret, right? Like she, when they want put it on social media, like the mama said right here, I never brought anything to social media. I never said nothing. I think this is where they took Leilani to the psych war where she was screaming and hollering and trying to put in the car. her her mama they were going at it with each other calling each other bitches well the mama called her bitch and she said you know what mama will get you some help like i got mine whatever the case may be woo, woo, woo. now the mama has an issue but her being mama she thinks she can just act and do what she needs to do because she turns around as you can see apologizing saying oh well this is my coping mechanism i'm so sorry so really the mama need to get her some help too and i guess on easter it's just that was her last straw. She came in. Mama talked about her looks, how she was, how her hair was, what she was wearing. And the daughter just was like, I've had enough. And I feel she just snapped. And that's why she fought her mother. It didn't make it right for the mama to turn around and empty a whole clip on your child. Try to stab your child. I understand. Don't nobody put their hands on you. But this is your children. And you already embarrassed her in front of everybody when she's just got the psych war. She feels that she's been coming to you trying to tell you how she feels. You don't listen. It, it's just, mama gotta learn where she wrong too. You can't put it all on the daughter. You gotta understand where you are wrong at and get you some help as well because parents ain't always right. Sometimes the parents can be fucked up too. At the end of the day, both of y'all need help. If it ain't about me, let's keep getting scared. All right, that's all I have for the sugar honey iced tea. Let's get into this mess. First of the ducket, we have Sunday So Cool versus Royalty. Now, I told y'all I was not putting it back on Messy Monday, but y'all brought this to my attention and said that we need to speak about it. So if I don't get all the information in order or put it all in there, don't get mad at me because, bitch, I don't give a fuck. All right, so let's just catch up. Now, we remember Lexi got upset because Royalty had exposed a phone call of her and CJ talking, and CJ had said that Lexi was a chef. Your, your, uh, your girlfriend's gonna get very upset. I don't have a girlfriend. I have a cook. A cook? A chef. Who's your chef? I don't have a girlfriend. Who's your chef? She's my cook. A chef! I thought she was the maid. Oh, no, I, I don't want to um, upset your. I don't want to upset your. Uh, upset your household. Your happy. Your happy household over there. At that time, CJ is saying that him and Lexi had broke up. They weren't talking right now. I guess they went on good terms. He went and he spent Easter with Nike, and you know Nike and Lexi ain't cool. So I guess that's why she did her little party over at her house 
doing her own little thing because she didn't want to be over there with them. So that's what's going on there. Now let's keep moving it up to what's happening to today. But you know, CJ and Royalty have been going back and forth to court, whatever the case may be, about the custody of the children and if he has to pay child support and all that good stuff. So child CJ ends up winning and he don't have to pay child support. So you know, he started bragging about that, but then Royalty was like, well child, you you're bragging about something you're supposed to be doing anyway. What are you talking about? That goes on, and for some reason, the mothers have gotten into all this. I don't know where we've been at Messy Monday, but how did the fuck did the mothers get into all this? So I guess CJ's mama has been attacking Royalty's family for some time now. Even when the twins were born, she joked about how the twins were born. She talked about the family. She's been picking on the family, how they look, things like that. So Royalty's daughter, Jalea, has decided to take it upon herself to say, hey, Mama Kool-Aid come out of the two and she can get it. Now everybody know that they call CJ Kool-Aid man, so I guess she's saying she can get it right along how she wants to give a little piece to CJ as well. So now she wanna fight CJ and the mama. Now to me, I feel, you know, hey, Jalea, stay in a child's place, but I get it, this woman has been taunting your family, your mama, and you ain't been saying nothing for years. And you know, at, at some point in time, a child gonna say enough is enough. I don't care if you grandmama, if you old, whatever, let's run this thing. So fast forward it up, CJ goes to drop off, you know, the twins, cause you know, he gets his days now. So when he goes to drop off the twins, whatever the case may be, he takes Kamari with him because he's like, hey, I just wanna see if you gonna fight me for real. Cause you told me to line it up, let's get it. Bourbon Street is a kid, a female girl said to line up and she wants to fade and she's gonna knock me out and I'm very terrified. But uh, I, I don't want nothing to do with that. Even though after today, I, I see it was just cap because when I dropped my kids off, she was there. She did have on the fighting clothes. I mean, I assume those was her fighting clothes unless that's just how she dressed now. But no words were said, no one rushed me, no one did anything. Kamari was there just, just in case, you know what I'm saying? Because I have 100% faith in my kid. And I know that my kid will not let me get drugged on the ground, sit back in the background and cry while recording me get beat on. That's just not what happened. You the daddy of Kamari and then you wanna put her in the situation to fight Jaleel? Like, what is going on? So in the midst of all that royalty and her mama going at it with CJ mama, telling CJ mama that she's a druggie, she done relapsed, and she got a home in Vegas, if y'all know what that means. And she didn't get the bump on her lip check. And then she telling royalty, girl, you can shut up because you done had my son private parts in your mouth. And I'm like, wait a minute, mama, what you talking about? Why are you worried about private parts in the mouth? And it's just a whole lot, a whole lot. And then they turn around and say, well, girl, I think it's about time for your co-workers to know that you over there sleeping around with one of the co-workers. Man, I'm like, oh! So then CJ comes and he gets into it and he's just like, he don't like how all this is going down. And he don't, people are like, why are you not taking up for your mother? And he's like, I'm not taking up for my mama because every chance she gets, she's talking about me and her videos. And I'm just like, but that's still your mama. But then he over here talking about how he gives his mama money and he don't understand how she doing him like that. But she like, she got fired from her job because he came out in an interview telling that she did drugs and I guess it got back to the job and she got fired. So she was saying the money that he was giving her wasn't enough that she was making at her job. And I'm just like, what is going on? This is too much. Y'all done brought all y'all family shit to the internet. And I can't let nobody keep me feeling like I'm in prison behind my past. I'm not gonna let that happen. CJ dragging you because you keep speaking on him publicly. Hold up. Wait a damn minute. If I can recall, I'm not sure what year it was, 2016 or whenever that was, when he did that Say Cheese um, interview. And he brought my name up. Well, not brought my name up, brought the fact that I'm his mom and I wasn't there in his life, me or his father. He should have left it at that. But did he? Oh, no. What'd he say? Oh, my mom was on drugs. And she was uh, probably... I never... In my life. Ever. Let's set that record straight now. I've said that in my uh, my own interview. Why would he lie like that? You know, I'm getting upset all over again. All over again. You didn't even have to say anything, but I wasn't there. Child, at this point, they, they all need help. This is just too much. We know too much. Keep us out the group chat. We know too much. C CJ, you the problem. You are the problem. You playing with Nike and royalty. Then you brought Lexi little 
ass in the mix. I almost said something. And you playing on her time with both of them. It's like you you are the problem. Everybody start hating each other because of you. If it ain't about me, let's keep key. Next case. Next on the ducket, we have Ramonte versus Cardi B. Now, I know I'm not the only one who was shocked when this happened because I didn't see this on my bingo card. Now, how this happened, because I know a lot of people were confused, was Ramonte had went on a birthday trip with a lot of his friends. And they were posting it on TikTok and it went viral. People were tuning in and it was actually very much entertaining. So when it came to an end, the magazine had made an article saying why wasn't his birthday sponsored and things like that. Ramonte then responded to them and he was like, well, first of all, Essence, you and BET are the problem because y'all don't ever reach out, y'all don't invite him to things and stuff like that. So how can you sit here and say this, but then you don't try to fix the problem? So, child, after that, people in the comments start going crazy. They were just like, uh, first of all, Ramonte, you're ghetto. <laughs> That's why they're not hitting you up. It's your personality, it's who you are, woo, 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 yada, yada, yada. And they want people that I guess they can market and things like that. So Ramonte came back and he was just like, okay, well, I'm not trying to be funny, but Cardi B is ghetto as well. So I wasn't gonna talk about this anymore because it was like, y'all know I don't like to drag things out, but the videos y'all keep saying ghetto and da 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 and it throws me off because none of my videos am I walking up to people selling them empty, they purse, give me everything you got. I'm loving the glasses. I'm loving the little brown bag with the touch. I don't think I'm as ghetto as everyone tries to make it seem. And what bothers me as a black person, you guys say that I'm ghetto, but Cardi B, who doesn't look like a visible black woman to me, and this is no shade to you, Cardi B. Actually, all tea, all shade. This is no shade. This is just literally a fact. And we're speaking on colorism and all those type of things. She is very, very ghetto. She what was the reason? She's way ghetto -er than me. She's way hooder, gangster, greasy with me. She was outside with the damn bloods. Good it out. <laughs> And y'all don't say that this lady is ghetto. Y'all don't say that she isn't marketable. It feels like everyone can be ghetto and, and black besides ghetto and black people. And again, no shade to you, Cardi B. I'm just doing a comparison. My content has always been uplifting women. Excuse me, ma'am. I love that outfit. Thank you. I might make a little joke about a relationship or a boy or something like that. And I might say, bitch, but that don't make me a fucking gangster thug psycho, man. Call me a son of a what again? So what do y'all want to put me in this ghetto, sad, black trope for? I am from the hood. Yes, I am. But I have layers to me. Now, me loving Cardi, as everybody already know, I didn't take what he said offensive, but I did kind of say, why'd you have to bring her into it? Just leave it on you. But Cardi was just like, why put me in it when I sat down with Bernie Sanders and people like this, and they always bring up my stripping and they bring up me being ghetto and, and stuff like that. She said, I had to actually rebrand myself so I could get some of the opportunities that I had. And then he comes and he says, why are you getting mad? All I was saying was, your complexion didn't hinder you as much like it would do the Sukiyanas and the Sexy Reds and the JTs and things like that. So then Ramonte alleged that Cardi B asked him why he didn't call Ice Spice a Mexican a few months ago, whatever the case may be. And he was like, you know what, I like both y'all. Um, I'm not bringing nobody into this, but all of y'all are good women. And so then Cardi B was like, look, first of all, don't try to gas like me. Are we talking about the DMs or the timeline? Because first of all, you saying this, and he turned around and saying what we talked about in DMs. Because the main discussion was, People never called me ghetto, but I showed you how people did call me ghetto. And so she went on to say, there's plenty of men that you could have compared yourself to. But then Ramonte goes back to Twitter and he says, well look, all I was trying to say was her being ghetto didn't hinder her career. So then Cardi B ends it off with, here's my advice to you Ramonte, it takes time. No matter how ghetto you are, you can still make it. Okay. Just remember the key is to be humble and patient. But here, child, I Spice comes out and she says, um, excuse me, Barty. And I'm like, oh girl, wait a minute, her name is Cardi. <laughs> but we, we'll let you slide. It's no offense, but I have a Dominican parent and a black one. And then Cardi comes back and says, well girl, first of all, I think we might have some confusion. <laughs> okay, why you trying to dibble and dabble where you're not supposed to belong? She said, um, all I asked was, why did he feel comfortable calling me Mexican when I don't even have Mexican parents? And so she goes on and she says some more, but at the end she says, oh yeah, she threw her little shade. Can you send me the picture that we took from your phone at Vanity Fair? <laughs> 
So then, you know, um, Ice Spice then sends it to her, whatever the case may be. They throw a little light, kissy kissy, you know, um, nice nasty shade. But the barbs didn't take that lightly, honey. And you know, they don't play about Nikki Child. And they came out and they were starting to exile her from the community. Like, girl, we don't fuck with you no more. Ice Spice, what the fuck going on, bitch? You out here doing kissy face, taking pictures and shit, but you want to put on when you're around Nikki. Hell, you time man. So I don't know, I'm just glad they finished it. Cause you know, Ramonte ended up putting his page on private. It was just a whole lot, a whole lot. He ended up coming back. The girls were still going at it with him. Cause you know, the Barty gang don't play either. So yeah, if it ain't about me, let's keep keeping this game. Next on the ducket, we have T versus Dre. Now, Pusha T had responded to the tweet that was talking about Dre. So, the tweet said, I just wanted to point out, after all these years of mob talk from Dre, no one has ever laid a finger on Pusha T. So then Pusha T comes like he says, not even a pinky. And I'm just like, oh? Because you know, Dre always talk about some, how he can have some shit shake and he'll turn the room and whoop, 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 yada, yada, yada. So then the commenters go and they said, well child, ain't nobody laid a hand on Dre either. And I'm like, hola. I object <laughs> because, girl, if y'all really want to be real about the situation, didn't him and Diddy allegedly get into it back in 2015 over the 0 to 100 beat? And so Diddy was upset about the situation. And Diddy punched him or something like that? Now, Diddy say he didn't punch him, but 50 Cent said he punched him. And y'all know 50 Cent, when he say something, nine times out of 10, it be true. Puff can't hear a hit? That's kind of crazy, Fifth. He still hear things from back then, that time period. Oh, got now. you, got you now. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Now. Got you he can't buy it right. He can't. You play it for him right now, and it's, it's hot. He can't buy it. This is why he's fighting Drake. <laughs> when you hit Drake, because he uh, used the beat that he didn't yeah, actually zero use. Zero to 100. Um, I did not put hands on Drake. Oh. And I do not want any problems with Drake. So somebody did put a little pinky on uh, Drake. And if we go keep going on down the line, didn't them boys back in his hometown back in 2010? He was sitting in his car, right? He's about to slide, or they walked up to the car, or something like that. They pointed guns at him, and they said, give me your cash and give me your jewelry. And then they got him, and they left, and then he called the police or whatever. This is when he was signed to uh, Lil Wayne. That happened, too. So somebody did put a pinky on him. And if we keep going, remember him and Chris Brown, that was the whole situation in the club. And then we're going to keep on going, didn't see our friend, um... I don't know why he did that, but I guess, you know, he wanted to see if Drake was going to bite again. Drake didn't bite again, and he left that what it was. So, girl, it is what it is, and it is what it is. So, I don't know. If it ain't about me, let's keep kidding. Let's get. Next on the ducket, we have Kim Lamar versus J. Cole. Now, this is a battle I did want to see because these two are very much great lyricists. They know how to rap. These men be writing their own stuff. And I'm always here for a good battle. Not all this back and forth, Twitter beef, and saying I'm going to get you here, and I'm going to do that, and all the fighting. I just like some good rap battles because then you get good songs, you get good moments, and things like that. So remember, Kendrick Lamar Future came out with a song, and there was a diss towards, you know, Drake and J. Cole. So... Everybody was just wondering, okay, is Drake or J. Cole gonna say anything? Cause you know, nobody was saying nothing. So J. Cole finally comes out and he drops an album called Mike the Leak Later. And then it has the fans talking about the last track that says Seven Minute Drill, where he where he seemingly dis where he seemingly disses Kendrick Lamar. He still doing shows, but fell off like the Simpsons. Your first was classic, your last was trash. So then the internet goes into a frenzy and it says Cole one, Kendrick Lamar zero. And then people are like, well, how? When he don't drop, he made this man drop a whole album, whatever the case may be. But let's stop again. He said, this is a warning. You know what I'm saying? These are warning shots. This is not a diss, but I can do what I need to do. Because to pay somebody homage and diss them at the same time, it's some nasty work. And I know Drake's sitting at home with a very rubbing his feet together, kicking the baby like, yes, let's get it, fool. So anyway, J. Cole ends up going on stage, making an apology towards Kendrick during the dream deal. The world want to see blood. So I say all of that to say, in my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab back and I try to keep it friendly, but at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that's gonna sit right with my spirit. That's gonna make me feel that's 
disrupts my peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and, and in that trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this uh, catalog of his greatness, I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers that ever touched a f***ing microphone? Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? As do I. So I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro, that was the lamest, like, goofiest shit. Made, I say all that to say it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my got my chin out. Take your best shot and take that chin, boy, do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive me for like the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path. Cause I ain't gonna lie to y'all, past two days felt terrible. Like, it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years. So all of that to say, man, I wanna, I wanna now perform this song that's a reminder to me of getting back on the right path and getting in tune with God. And the name of the song is called Love Yours. I wanna do that for y'all. And I think, J. Cole is like, look, I'm past that era, I've done that. Now I just like to make music to make music. It ain't about, am I the best lyricist? Am I better? Who's this? Who's that? It's just music. And what he's saying is when he fed into that, it took him from the peace and the love that he has for music back to, I guess, this. And that's something that he just doesn't want to be a part of. Which you gotta respect that. And he self-corrected his mistake for letting himself backslide into, I guess, you know, negative energy and drama. Even though we want the battles, we miss the hip hop like that. But to him, that is just something he's not a part of anymore. Doesn't make him less hip hop, but it's just something he doesn't want to be associated with. And I ain't gonna lie, as much as I be wanting to see a battle, I know when I'm in my battles with people, inner peace, is more important than winning or losing a battle. You know how your parent always says, pick and choose your battles wisely. You don't have to respond to everything and not responding sometimes is better than responding. It's kind of like this. And I feel like he's like, damn, why did I let this person soak me back into this? You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. When God levels you up, that it will hurt you when you fall back to the flesh. Oh my God. And ladies, this is kind of like after you argue with your man, <laughs> And you said some evil shit because you was hungry. But then you turn around and be like, you know what? I'm sorry, baby. I really didn't mean this. <laughs> it's like that. Like, girl, I knew better, but I could have really fucked you up. But I love you and I'm sorry. All right. Well, if it ain't about me, let's get getting this good. So next on the docket, we got JT versus Gorilla. And this was another one with all these tweets. Y'all know I hate all these tweets. We gonna try to squish it down, so we ain't gotta talk about all of that. But what we gonna talk about is what we gonna talk about. So as y'all know, Gorilla came out with a song with Megan, honey. And in the song, she mentioned JT. So JT heard it, and JT came out. And JT was basically just like, I've been said she didn't like me. She the one that went radio silent, played into it, whatever the case may be. Cause y'all remember back in the day there was a rumor that her and JT had an occasion. I think it was allegedly said that Glorilla slapped her with a purse or something like that. I don't, I don't know. That's what the girls are saying. It's just mighty funny how Glorilla came back with this song and it said, slapping rap bitches and making bail, whole yeah, Glow. You know what I'm saying? So JT knew what she was saying, but then she's like, oh, but you wanna talk about all this unity. So then they was like, okay, so you were subbing Glorilla all this time when you were making them tweets. And y'all remember them tweets when JT was saying, you know, these girls is fake, they phony, woo woo woo, yada. We were like, who is she talking about? And nobody knew who she was talking about, but girl, she was talking about Glow. And that's how she made that little tweet. And then we were like, what's going on? And here come Glow with this new song. It's like, oh. And then that's when JT come out and say, uh-huh. And we all like, ah. Now everybody's eyes is like, whoa, we get it. So slapping 
bitches that make your bell whole gal glow is you, JT, when she's like doing that purse. And now she said, we never, we ain't have beef, but we ain't friends. So now the shit done hit the fan. So then JT said, well, you know what? I guess this is where she wanted to address it with her album, whatever the case may be. And she was like, and who gonna clear up slapping somebody, you know what I'm saying, when it's going viral? And I, I guess it's just for your brand. Because somebody had asked her, well, why didn't Glow clear it up? And you know, she said what she said. So then Glow was like, well, girl, shut your dumb ass up and fix them ugly ass wigs. I said it ain't no beef, ho. You the one that got secret animosity. <laughs> so JT come back and she said, well, girl, ugly should never leave your mouth, Joe. And I'm like, oh my God, why she call her Joe? She's like a man or son, because her name is Glow. But I saw what you did there. Like, like you wasn't born feet first, puss ass. <laughs> Puss ass off. I'm like, oh my God, the girls is tweeting. So then Glorilla comes back and she says, well, you know what? No free promo. But I knew it wasn't gonna stop there because Glorilla is not gonna just sit there and let this girl just say what she gonna say. So then JT comes back and she says, oh, bitch, you said my name, Air Mattress Brain. <laughs> why are the girls doing this to each other? And ugly wigs, bitch, you a dumb hoe. You will never in your life be this wrong. So JT keeps going and she very much says, you never hit me, baby. You was fan out. You approached me yelling sound like a, a beat up box, <laughs> box Chevy. And I thought this girl was a real bitch, but she came in and started all this mess with SNF. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so JT is really talking to her like, nah, bitch, you want to talk this shit. You want to put out this little song. You want to say what you said. I let you slide all these times, Miss Thing. But girl, no, come back out here and let's play. After she said she wasn't doing no free promo, I guess JT hit that nerve and Glow come back out and she said, don't make me pop up at them backyard concerts you doing. I guess slapping bitches and making bell home made you feel some type of way like you was the last bitch I had a run in with. And then so JT said, well girl, come on, ho. And so Glow was like, girl, I mentioned your name to clear the air. What you wanted me to say, I didn't slap you, but I hit you with a purse instead? <laughs> God. Damn. Then she goes, she do some nasty work, and she called this girl by her inmate number. She said 0983. I said, oh, I know you that. I, I said, it's time to fight. I don't even want to read nothing else. It is time to fight. This bitch done called you by your inmate name. That's some nasty work. And so JT was like, well, bitch, pending. What's T? Let's go. I'm like, oh, these girls is talking too much. Now, y'all supposed to be these city girls outside. We outside, and... Slapping bitches and making bail. Well, bitch, all y'all doing right now is twittering. I need y'all to fight. Because at this point, y'all done said some shit that need to be cleared up in these streets. Getting me feel on. Yeah, I'm on. So, child, we over here like, where is Carisha? Every time Carisha get in drag, JT is there. Like, where the fuck is Carisha? Carisha never say anything. We be like, damn. And then when all the shit over, Carisha pop up and she come out. We be like, damn, there you go. JT done been beat up, drug and everything, but every time somebody on your head, she there. So child, I don't know what's going on. The girl is crazy. So I sat back and I know I love to do a little conspiracy stuff sometimes. And I was like, well, what if Megan and Glow did this to ruffle JT's feathers? Cause you know, JT is friends with Nikki. And you know, Megan and Glow are friends and Glow is friends with Cardi. So maybe she was doing it to make Nikki pop back out and then people like, nah, Nikki is on her tour doing her thing. But then it's mighty funny cause Nikki didn't say nothing. She was minding her business. Megan the nail popped out and she said this. Oh, the amount of sushi you have ordered. <laughs> what you do? What you do? Why you got all this food? <laughs> oh. Is that good coming? Hmm? That's good. The amount mm -hmm. of food like you have like ordered. <laughs> Alright, for real, for real, for real. Why is you falling up? I know for sure. That whole said. That whole said. That whole said, ho. These girls be having beef, and I mean beef, cause now why is you taunting Nikki? Why you bringing her rap this up? You said you wasn't saying nothing. You said you was done, but now you on live playing, talking about the diss track she said. You know what? These girls be acting like they tough. 
But then when the girls wanted to come back with their diss stuff, they didn't say nothing. I think these girls got something in the bag and they want Nicki to say something so Megan can release what she need to release. They want to put some more plays on this song that they done just released out because I guess I don't, I don't know. Is it doing what they thought it was going to do? Because if Nicki respond, then they can start promoting the music to Mo. Because why? After she was fussing with JT, Glow, then Glow put this out. When Miss Kyle, she faded. White boy wasted. Chin and Tatum. That timing is really crazy to me for this argument. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, girl. This is this a whole lot of whole lot. This stuff be strategically done. You did that line for a reason. You did it for a reason. But we gonna sit back and we gonna watch it, child. But this is a whole lot, a whole lot. The girl is fighting. What you say? <laughs> Breaking news! <laughs> so next on the docket, we got the City Girls. Now, I'm gonna be scrolling through this right along with y'all. So, Santana tweeted out, my agent calls me every other day with an inquiry or a check for the doll. How much to stand Twitter pay? There will be a TV show to address the things you are so heavily invested and interested in. Stay tuned. So then after he said that, JT came back and she said, and I better not be mentioned since I'm not in an episode. Nothing should be addressed without me. Who are you? You done gave yourself a position of power. You're not my power attorney. Sit your ass down. Then she said, Glock loaded with an extended clip. I said, oh, bitch, it's about to get stupid. So Santana come back and he said, sheesh. I thought we were talking about Puff and those allegations, just like the rest of the world. What the fuck are you talking about? So she said, reread what I said in case you didn't comprehend it the first time. So I went back and I reread. And I said, I better not be mentioned since I'm not in an episode. Because he's talking about some uh, agents are calling me every day. I guess there's another DD thing going on. How much does Stan Blue to pay? There will be a TV show to address things you are so heavily invested and interested in. So I'm thinking he's saying the TV show ain't been filmed, but they're interested, they're interested in a TV show. And she just said, you know, I better not be in it. Maybe because her and JT and all them ain't really talking right now. I don't know, so let's keep going. So then she said, what happens in the dark will always come to the light. So I guess they ain't been talking how we know they ain't been talking. We said they ain't been talking. Remember, just in the last thing I said, Carisha ain't never there. Because when her and Glow was going at it, where was Carisha? Carisha ain't never there. When them folks be attacking her, ain't never there. So let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going. Ooh, this solar eclipse is eclipsing. So then Miami come out and she say, a bitch been sneak dissing me for weeks and I ain't said shit, but a bitch mad at me. What a bitch mad at me for? And so I'm just like, what is going on? Why is, why is they fussing like this? So then she said, oh, Miss Mamas, this is your last day playing dawn. I said, well. And then she said, uh, it's a little bit too much for me to tweet on here. I would like to have a sit down with Carisha, please. And this, and this time leave Santana at home. <laughs> but, okay, and then let me see, let me see. It's gonna get ugly than Kim Harvey. That's what somebody said. I didn't say that. Oh, let me go through these comments. Bring up the Diddy lawsuit. <laughs> 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 then they said, clock it. What she said right here? Y'all Oh, girl, the girls is great. Okay, they said, oh, everybody getting serious. Okay, Santana has no business being in this. Santana has no business being involved in this. This is woman business. Carisha choose, Carisha choose getting pissed on. Wait, Carisha choose getting pissed on and some Gucci bags over a real ass friendship. Oh my God, no bites in the deli on the lap. Oh my God, hold on, woman to woman. <laughs> Okay, let me see. They said, oh my God, Lee, Glorilla, and the NYC Zoo. Why is the girl from Glorilla in this? Okay, keep going. Then she said, I know I come off crazy, but never in my life did no whack shit to this girl. She literally enjoys seeing me being dragged. I told y'all. Oh, shit, shit falling. Um, when people show me love, she goes crazy and call it a hate train. But like I said, we can sit down and talk about it. Then they said, when you were in jail for being a thief, Carisha held the city girl's name down. She was pretty as fuck. Da, 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 da. But that's because she was in jail. So now that she out and it's a competition, people be putting them against each other, but really they not. Okay, what really bothers me about all this is the fact that you're being provoked. And when you respond, you turn into the you the problem. 
Mm, clock did his personal tune. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Clock it. She been fake. She always been the first to support her in the beat. And she never once spoke up for you. Oh, believe me. She, mm. Okay, let's go back to the main thing. Okay, scrolling up, scrolling up. Dennis said, Miami is really going through something. You just responding to strangers on Twitter. You're pathetic. She said, and I was for sure there for her from the beginning. But y'all will see this is y'all will see it this time that I'm not and never was and never will be the problem. Have a nice day. Keep going. Y'all Miami, for you to come on here and try to play victim is crazy. Um JT, you've been sneak dissing me for the past for the last couple of days. I haven't said shit back to you. You made two whole songs dissing me. Um, I still rap your shit with my chest out and showed you love. So what's the real problem here? She said, girl, what song was about you? Somebody said the city girl is officially over. The hit dog a holla. Now she feel like no bars and sideways was about her. She cannot be serious. If she felt that way, why didn't she just call you? True. Ooh, sideways got the girl shook. A hit dog gonna holler. The city girl is officially over. How can I stop this? Right. If I get everybody to, okay, hold on, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let's keep going, let's keep going up. Um, okay, so she said, girl, she said, so then she come back, she said, girl, the internet told you which song was about you. Girl, get your phone back from whoever this is, because baby, don't play with me. Right. What is going on? Okay, 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 okay. Keep going up, keep going up. What is going on? Somebody said, no, oh, so my Emmett said, no bars in sideways is what she thought was about her. She so then JT said, oh, wow, you're really losing it. If you thought this, why not speak to me about it? You came on here and said, LOL, so people can ask you why you wasn't defending me. Attention seeking as usual. Ooh, she never defends you, baby. Not going to lie, y'all girls both losing it. <laughs> Right, but this is that. This is what happens when friends don't speak. But Carisha rapping every verse from No Bars. Why are you rapping the verse if you think it's allegedly dissing you? She never be in these slow allegations. Ooh, woo. let me refresh. Let me refresh. She said, a bitch trying to kick me while I'm down and play into these narratives. It's dangerous when I've been nothing but a friend of you. Then she said, you looking for a way out of your situation. Who was the first person called you when it all started? You're a sad fucking case. Ooh! Woo! Wait! No, she didn't. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. Six hours ago. No, she didn't. Oh, see, they playing. Let Lotto didn't say that. Well, why is they making fake tweets? Hold on. Lotto did not say that. She didn't say that. Let me go ahead. Oh, y'all, we is this is live. I can't even edit this. Go back. Oh my god, go back, go back, go back to JT, JT page. Okay, hold on, y'all. This is live. How long, man? Ooh, this is messy, messy, messy. All the drama aside, I'm proud of y'all for... Okay, just fuck that. Keep scrolling. Let me scroll, 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 scroll. This is mess. Oh, my God. I can't even keep... I got to get ready to edit. I can't keep going back and forth. I got to edit. Okay. Oh, my God. JT, JT, what JT saying? What JT saying? Let me go, Miami. What my, my what Miami saying? <laughs> oh, my God. What Miami saying? Oh, my name is Ann. You weird, but always want to act like I'm the weirdo. You always mad. It's always a problem. And all I try to do is push you to tell you you the shit. You can rap. You should model, etc. You always mad. You doing your shit as you should. Congratulations. But somehow, you still mad. Oh, my God. You looking for a way out of the situation. Who was the first person that called you and when it all started, she said, girl, not you. Oh! oh my God. Here go, oh. Who is this? 
this. Girl, if it was a diss, why you been on here story making a video singing both songs? Bitch, because I'm not a hater. Oh, this is crazy. I gotta, I gotta go. <sighs> Jesus. This too much. I gotta go. I can't, I can't look no more. I can't look no more. They need to get out the internet. What's Santana saying? What is Santana saying? Sauce is Santana. What's Santana saying? I can't look at this shit. I gotta go. Okay, y'all, well, that's what's going on. Oh, my God. The girls is fighting. That's all I got for Mr. Monday right now. Let's just keep looking. God only made one you. If you don't be you, then nobody else will. I will see you next Monday, next A lot of going on, there's a whole lot, a lot of going on, there's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on, there's a whole lot, a lot of going on.